we, we, we pulled out midweek Bible class and, uh, and all, it came up with this idea of first Wednesdays. And we want to give this a shot until the end of the year. And my hope with First Wednesdays is that we could spend an hour together, an hour and 10 minutes together with worship and the word. So when we come into uh, this place, one, we want to get here and just be ready to worship God. That's, that's going to be critical that we are just ready, ready to worship God and ready to honor God when we come here. Don't let our worship team work, work and, and you watch. Amen. Don't let our worship team work and you watch, but when you come in, be in with them and let them know that, that, that uh, they are leading you into a space where you can touch God, meet God, have an encounter with God like you've never had before. That's number one. The second thing is that this, I, it, it, is my, it is my challenge that these be impartations, that these are not just sermons. So I'm not just preaching uh, to sermonize you, but I want to impart something. I want you to walk out saying, I got something that I can put in my life from day to day. All right. Okay. Does that sound fair? All right. So these sessions are important for a couple of things. It's important that you have something you can take notes with. Uh, something that you can take notes with and we are a note-taking church so we always have people that show up with pen and pencil or uh, iPads or whatever but something you could take notes with so that you can get the teaching but not just to get the teaching get what God is saying to you while we're teaching that's as important as anything that you get what God is saying to you while we're doing the teaching because I'm telling you man there's so many nuggets in the Bible it's like it's a new book every time I read it Amen. The Bible says, the scripture says this about itself. It says that the word of God is alive, sharper than any two-edged sword. Some people's Bible says it's quick. That quick, quick means to be alive. And the Bible is alive, which means however you need, just like a living person can be whatever you need them to be, so is the word of God. It's the same way. Any, any moment, any circumstance, any situation you have in your life, the word of God just maneuvers when you maneuver. Amen. And it will do that in every area and every season of your life. So are you guys ready for tonight? Are y'all ready for tonight? All right. I want you to tell somebody breakthrough is in the house. Okay. So John, um, Matthew 14, Matthew 14, uh, we read some of this Sunday, and I told you guys I had about three sermons that I wanted to give you out of, out of what I taught on Sunday. Uh, but we read out of Matthew 14. I want to read today uh, just a handful of scriptures from that. I want you to grab your Bible when you have Matthew 14. Shout, I got it. So if you need a second, say, hold on a second. All right. Uh, Matthew 14, and uh, let's start reading uh, at verse... 25. Matthew 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 25. This is what the New King James Bible says. It says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. Somebody shout, It's a ghost. And they cried, That's weak. Say, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Somebody shall command me. Somebody shall command me. Somebody shall, Lord, command me. He said, if it is you, command me to come out on the water. So he said, come. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down off the boat, he walked on the water toward Jesus. He walked on the water toward Jesus and the word of the Lord is blessed. I want you to find somebody and I want you to say habit callings. Habit callings. Habit callings. I know y'all like how do those two words go together? Find somebody else. Tell them habit callings. Habit callings. All right. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I, will, I thank you and I bless you, God, for the word of God. I bless you, God, that you are with us tonight. And I pray that over the next few moments, you would push on us, you would challenge us uh, in this area of our habits. I pray that you would push on us in the area of our habits so that we can be moved to move 
in the ways you've always seen us. And in this, Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. Anoint me to teach. Anoint us to listen and learn. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Smile at somebody. Tell them it's all good. We just at church. Uh, if you're watching online, I really uh, appreciate you for watching online. I know a handful of people uh, reached out and said that they would be watching online. I, I, I want to teach about habits. Somebody shout habits. All of us have habits. Everyone in this room has a habit. And ha all habits are not bad, but neither are all habits necessarily good. But most of us are a, uh, we are a culmination of the habits that we have or that we don't have. It is critically important that you understand that habits are important. Habits are a part of human development. They are part of human life. No person in this place, in this room, does not instinctually do something that we call a habit. Now, habits are different than reflexes. So blinking is not a habit. Blinking is not a habit. What a habit is, it's, a, it's essentially a behavior that you've taught yourself or have been taught to do. And you have repeated it so much to the degree that your brain has become, uh, has started to use it as, um, uh, as the path of least resistance for you to do whatever it is you're trying to do. That's what a habit is. A habit is a behavior that you've repeated so many times that your brain is now telling you that this is the proper thing, this is the fastest thing, this is the most important thing, this is how this should be done. That's what a habit is. And once you start, once you pick up a habit, it's difficult to break a habit. Once you pick up a, a, a habit, it is not easy to break a habit. It's not easy to break anything as small as sucking your thumb or biting your fingernails. Uh, it, it can be as simple as that or it can be as difficult as having a habit of being a chronicle pathological liar. A chronicle pathological uh, pessimist. Are you hearing what I'm saying? These are learned behaviors, and I want to talk to us today about some things as the scripture as it, as it relates to habits. But before we talk about habits, I need to talk to you about the way that the people of God, the people in the kingdom of God, pick up their habits. And there is a method and there is a formula to build in proper habits that the Bible teaches us, and it's not difficult if you understand the way that God challenges us. You are wired by the Spirit of God. Somebody say that. Say, I'm wired by the Spirit of God. Sometimes you have to confess that to yourself to remind yourself that you're not wired by the, wor the world. You are wired by the Spirit of God. You are wired by God. You are not wired by the world. You are not put together the way the world has, has told us we have been put together. So part of our undoing and part of our putting together, parts of our building ourselves up, it is critical to have the Word of God on your side when you're doing these things. I want you to write down this word submission. Write down the word submission. Submission. All right. I'm going to be pushing on you. I'm going to be challenging you, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk to us about habits. But uh, but while we're talking about before we talk about habits, we have to talk about submission, because there's a methodology for habits to be pulled out of you, and for the best of you to be pulled out of you. And this way of moving through your life is going to have to become habitual if you're going to walk in the things that God has called you in. Okay, I'm, I'm going to make this almost foolproof by the word of God. It's not even going to be difficult. It's going to be almost foolproof. But first, I need you to understand submission. Somebody shout submission. Somebody shout submission. Submission, two words. Sub, under, mission. Sub, under, a mission. What submission means is to put your mission under someone else's mission. This is to take your heart, your ideals, your concept, your desire, what it is that you want in any moment in time, and to put it underneath someone else's mission. That means that somebody else has to go before you. That's submission. The problem with submission is not that uh, people have ideas that you would put yourself under. The challenge with submitting is the idea of believing that my mission is as vitally important as your mission. And we run across problems with submission, not because the idea of submission is bad, but what happens when I feel like at 40 plus years old, uh, it's time to do my stuff. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
what, what happens, pastor, when it's time to do my ministry? How, how do, so the problem with, with submission is oftentimes when there are competing missions, and it's not a matter of whose mission is better or who's worse, but whose turn is it to go? So mission, so submission is really not a bad word as we made it seem, but submission becomes problematic because timing of missions is critical. Particularly as you get older, you start to feel like if this don't happen now, it's never going to happen, and I may never get this to happen in my life, and it'll never, and I've spent my whole life helping you do your thing, and now you, and we always feel like God is going to some kind of way let the time pass before we can do his mission for our lives. So we struggle with one another when it comes to submission. It's not just a husband and wife thing. It's a, it's a leader subordinate thing. So it's about submission, not just at home, but it's submission at church. It's submission at work. It's submission with law enforcement. It's submission with, it's like where and what time and place of my life do I take my mission and put it underneath the mission of somebody that's of a higher, watch this word, authority than me. Somebody shout authority say that loud shout authority authority is an authority is a person who has the right of way let's make that real simple I don't want to complicate authority for you but authority is a person who has the right of way in any moment in time so if your child was in here and you had a three-year-old child you are supposed to be the authority you're supposed to have the right of way if law enforcement came in and they were righteous, they were righteously expressed in the law, they should have right, uh, th they should have authority when they come in. And this is, so let's put these together now because submission is important. Somebody shout submission. Submission is important. Submission is a timing thing and is, it is an authority thing. It is a matter of whose turn is it to exercise their authority. Now, we, you, you, will, you will understand the way that the things of God work because God operates in authority and submission. The kingdom of God operates with authority and submission. If you read Romans chapter 13, Romans chapter 13 helps us understand that every person in this world, the scripture teaches us that everyone is under somebody's authority. And the Bible says to resist the ordinance of God. To resist the ordinance of man, rather, is to resist the ordinance of God. God says that if you do not honor, usurp, or rebel against my earthly authorities, you have done that to me. Are you following what I just said? He said, God looks at that and he says, every place there has been delegated authority in the world, he says, act like that's me putting order in the earth. So parents become important. Amen. Being a parent is an authority space. Having a spiritual uh, authority is important. Being in the fivefold is important according to our understanding of text. Being a pastor is important. Being a mentor, a teacher, somebody that has authority in any given sphere, if sphere rather, it is important. And when you have been given authority, it is critical that you exercise it within the sphere in which you have authority. So a teacher might not be able to come to your house and have authority, but when you're in their classroom, are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. I might not be able to have authority in your house, but when you come to my house, are you hearing what I'm saying? This is important because because this helps everybody understand that everybody, that leadership and authority is a fluid thing because in some moments, I am the epitome of leadership when you come to the City of Hope International Church. But if I go to another house, I don't get to stand in their pulpit and say the things that I say because I now have to take whatever my mission is and put it under theirs. Why? Because I'm in their sphere of influence. So they have now authority, and I have to submit. This is important. This is important because the way that the kingdom of God operates, the way that the kingdom of God works, is it operates through a series of individuals who have been given authority, that when they exercise their authority to what is placed underneath them in their sphere, they can activate the life 
of everything that is underneath them and help move their lives forward and help them create positive habits so that they can move in the kingdom of God the way God intended for them to move. Did you hear what I just said? It's important that parents, I like to use parents, uh, uh, I like to use parents because it's an easy metaphor, but a parent who exercises authority in their house helps their children build winning habits so that when they leave their house, they have these habits that, that, that they can, that, that will allow them to be good citizens or good students and model people once they move out into the real world. But that doesn't happen by accident. That happens because the authority calls something out of the subordinate and demands something of them. All right? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, is this, now, now, now I need you to understand how this operates because I want to give you three habits that if you are going to move in great things, not good things, great things, somebody shout great. Somebody shout great. If you are going to move in great things, you are going to have to submit yourself to an authority. Amen. Amen. If you're going to have a great marriage, somebody's going to have to submit to authority. If you're going to have a great business, somebody's going to have to submit to authority. If you're going to have a great church, somebody's going to have to submit to authority. If you're going to have a great whatever it is that you want, when the authority of the room steps in, somebody has to be an authority and somebody has to be a subordinate in the moment. Okay? That don't mean you're not a leader and it doesn't mean that you don't have power. It don't mean all that. It just, doesn't, it just means that while you're in this sphere, you have to learn to be humbled under the power of the person God gave authority. That making sense? All right. The reason why this is going to be critical is because you got big things to do. You got God things to do. And one of the ways that the enemy has challenged us into robbing us of our destiny and robbing us of our greatest life is he has convinced us that there is this sense of equality at all times that takes place and nobody can tell you what to do and nobody can challenge you and nobody can get in your face and push you and nobody can tell you that you're wrong and nobody can tell you that you're not living up to your potential and nobody and as soon as somebody do you go to another church I mean you go to another job I'm sorry you find you another somebody to be in love with as soon as they call you to rise up and be somebody better than you have been and that is a trick of the enemy to keep you from becoming great I'm going to say that again to keep you from becoming great we all have this tendency to think that the way up is up the way up is actually down are you hearing what I'm saying God says if you humble yourself under the hand of the almighty in due time I'll come on help me preach I'll raise you up. So now the way that the, the way that the great are great is they find a way to serve. They find a way to be humble. They find a way to give people what they need. Great people are not great because they shot to the top. Great people are great because oftentimes God brought them to their knees. All right? You will never be great if you will not find an authority and submit to an authority that can move your life forward. All right, so I'm gonna give you three, three habits, three habits. Somebody shout three habits. I want you to write these down. I'm gonna give you three habits that are gonna bless your calling. Three habits that are gonna bless your calling. Here's the first habit I want you to do. I, you have to see correctly. Somebody shout see correctly. You have to see, I mean literally, shift your perception of your authority figures in your life. You have to shift your perspective. I want you to see what happens in the scripture. The first thing that takes place is when Jesus gets, when Jesus starts walking on the water, the Bible says that they were on the boat and they saw him walking on the water. And when they saw him walking on the water, the scripture says this, they looked at each other and they said, this is a ghost that we see. He said this is a ghost that we see. Now, this becomes a problem because of the fact of what they see. It is not, it's not a fact that Jesus was walking on the water that was a, big, a, a, a real big deal to some degree, uh, even though that, that is a big deal, right? A man walking on the water is a big deal. But it was the fact that just four hours earlier, they saw this man do something else miraculous. 
Just four hours earlier, he took a boy's lunch, two fish, five loaves, broke it, and fed 5,000 people, almost 10,000 people, all in one sitting. He sat down and did a miraculous thing. Four hours later, he's doing something else miraculous, and they refused to see him as a miraculous person. They said this must be a ghost instead of it being Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so when you fall, you will never be able to walk in the miraculous as, or, you, or in your greatness. And you'll never be able to walk in, in that level of, of excellence that you want for your life if you are insistent on robbing the authorities that God has put in your life of the honor that God has put on their life. Are you following what I'm saying? I, if you are insistent that you are going to rob the authorities that God put in your life from the honor that is on their life, they will never be able to pull out of you what is necessary to take you to your next level. Uh-huh. You, you have to honor. Somebody shout honor. You have to honor your way to your next level. Honor your way to your next promotion. Honor your way to your next blessing. Honor your way. Honor is the key to the kingdom of God. Honor is how, your, your, how, your, how the kingdom of God moves forward. And watch this. And you will never honor what you do not see as being honorable. So the perception is not a matter of if Jesus was a miraculous person. If they refused to see him as such, he could do every miracle in, under the sun. And if they refused to give him credit for it, they would never experience the power of who they could be. Mm -hmm. You don't get an opportunity to, de, de, to pull your leaders down to your size and expect them to give you something at the level of their anointing. I'm going to help y'all in here tonight. You don't get to do it. You don't get to that. She's just a woman just like I'm a woman. Well, she, she, she won't be able to give you anything but what a woman has then. But if you see her as an anointed person of God, call to my life for this moment. I, and no, she ain't perfect, but she's got something on her that I need for my life. When I perceive her to be great, she can give me out of, her, out of my perception. God, help me in this place. That's why the Bible say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. He said, let's make him huge because we don't need stuff we can do. We need something bigger than what we are. So I've got to enlarge him or magnify him so I can ask at the level that he is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you've got to determine today, are you talking to Terrell or are you talking to an anointed man of God? Are you talking to Terrell or are you talking to somebody that has been empowered to pull something out of your life and speak into your destiny and challenge you to your future and release you to do something that God has called you to? Because you can talk to Terrell all day and you will get what you got. Or you can talk to what God has bestowed on Terrell and you can walk into places that Terrell couldn't even conceivably open his mouth to release you to except by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He said they saw him and they were like, he's a ghost. And watch what Jesus did. This is the thing I love about Jesus is he did not let them downplay his, uh, his honor. Jesus said, I'm not a ghost, it's me. <laughs> did, you, did you see that in the text? Watch this. He, did, he, said, he said, listen, he said, he said, he said, he said it's, it's not a ghost. He said, it is, it is, it is, it is me that's here. He said, I'm the one that's here. It's the, I'm the same guy you was having lunch with. I'm the same guy that broke the bread. I'm the same guy that was born of a Virgin Mary. I'm the same guy that worked with Joseph until I was 33 years old or so. I'm the same guy. I'm the same guy. Now, you've got a choice to make, people, is that you are either going to see me on the same guy, as the same guy or you're going to recognize the fact that I'm walking on water and you're in a boat. There's going to be got to be some kind of recognition that I'm walking on water and in the boat. And if you want to walk in the power that I'm walking in, watch this now. You get, if you want to walk, if you want to stay in your boat, you're more than welcome to stay in your boat. And we can, you know, this is Jesus talking. We can have same church that we have all the time and I can preach you happy in your boat. But if you want to do something miraculous in your life and walk on water like I'm walking on water, you got to see me different than you just saw me. You have to shift your perception. Somebody shout, shift your perception. 
Sift your, you can ne- a, a coach can never call the best out of you if you don't respect the voice that he's speaking from. A mentor can never call the best out of you if you don't respect the places that your mentor has been. A parent can never call something out of you if you don't respect the, uh, and honor the position that God has placed them in your life. A pastor can never call something out of you if all you do is just see that, hey, this is a guy that I've been knowing for 15, 20, 25 years, and he's just like me. Of course, then he will be just like you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jesus walked to his disciples. He said, who do men say that I am? He said, they say you're John the Baptist. They say you're Elias. Jesus said, okay, that's cool. Who do you say that I am? He said, well, I say you're the Christ. Watch what Jesus did after he raised his perception of him. He said, I say you're the Christ. He, God said, you're right. Heaven and earth did not reveal that to you, but my Father which is in heaven who has given this to you. He said, and now I give you keys. He, he said, because you perceive me, now I can give you something. God, help me in this place. Some of you will never get anything from me because of how you perceive me. It's not that there's nothing to give. Jesus, help me. It's not that Jesus had nothing to give Peter, but what unlocked what Jesus had was Peter's perception of who Jesus was. And as soon as Jesus looked up and as soon as Peter said, you must be the Christ, Jesus said, I got something to give you at the level of your perception of me. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And you got to be careful. So so here's what has happened now. Because Miriam was struck by leprosy. And she wasn't struck by, y'all remember the story? She comes and she starts to front her brother Moses and, and she starts to front him over who he got married to and the Bible said that, uh, that, that the Lord struck her with leprosy and she wasn't struck with leprosy because she contracted it some kind of way. Her dishonor, her dishonor, watch this, stagnated her growth and development. Mm-hmm. Her dishonor of her, of she couldn't see past, this is my brother. This is my brother. They're my brother, and you shouldn't be doing that because you're my brother, and I'm the one that's got the right to tell you something. And it's not that she doesn't have the right to hold her brother accountable, but there is a way that you deal with things you honor even if you have to challenge them. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. She called leprosy because she treated what was annoying common I'm gonna say that again because my mic went out she, she she the reason why she was struck with leprosy is because she treated what was anointed like it was common mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so one of the habits you have to get it is you have to see correctly somebody shall see correctly all right here's the second thing that the habit that you have to build for your life you must be activated correctly you must be activated correctly you must be activated correctly. Somebody shout, activate correctly. Um, uh, what God does to all authorities is he puts with inside the authority uh, a mechanism, spiritual. It's just purely spiritual. I'm going to show it to you by scripture. He puts inside a mechanism inside of all things that authority that the people that are in their sphere that can perceive them the way that God has planted them, he has put something in all authority figures that will allow them to activate something in the lives of the people that will perceive them as being an authority. He has put something in, in, in each person. It's, it's purely spiritual. It's purely spiritual. I can't, I can't, we can't even scientifically uh, uh, make it work, but what we do know scientifically by observation, we cannot tell you how it works scientifically, but what we do know by science and observation is that when a parent tells their child that they can do it, for some reason it activates something in their child and the child starts to believe that they can. Because that's what happens when an authority speaks to something that perceives it to be what God has anointed it to be, all right? So it, it activates, and you've got to activate correctly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How does it, Pastor, how, how, make it spiritual? Jesus says this. He said, my sheep will know my voice. That's what he said. He said, my sheep will know my voice, and another one they will not follow. They will know my voice and follow me, and another one they will not follow. Now, let me help you with the imagery of this. So what would happen in the days is that shepherds who 
would uh, watch their flock of sheep. Let's say that, that I had 50 sheep that I was watching. And because we take our shepherd, all the shepherds would take their sheep out to graze, it might be 30 of us that, uh, that, that, that want to get some rest and go home and see our families or go home and take care of some business. So what would happen is they would build a huge pen about the size of this room. All the shepherds would come together. They'd build a huge pen in the room. And then they let all their sheep go in and a handful of shepherds would stay and the other ones would go to their families and enjoy themselves and stuff like that and they'd have you know an open door uh at the at the begin at the the front whatnot and this is where jesus says that i am the door y'all know that one this is what he's talking about he's saying that i am the door he's talking about the door in and out of the safe place right so what has happened now is jesus says that my sheep would know my voice this is what has to happen when a shepherd returns from his rest he has to get his sheep out of everybody else's sheep and most shepherds will create some kind of call we call it a cattle call because we're mostly in america we're most used to this happening with cows but in uh in in the middle east during that time it was with sheep and they would have a basically a cattle call it might be a hits it might be a whistle it might be uh, a bell it might be something and when they make that call we call it in the spirit a clarion call. When they make that call, maybe it's a bell. When I ring my bell, all my sheep in the middle of the sheep start rising up looking for me because they know my voice. And they'll work their way to the front to come to the bell. Are you following what I'm saying? They'll work their way to come to the bell and they will respond to the voice that I just gave. Are y'all following me tonight? So this is what Jesus says. Jesus says that when I start looking for all my people, he said, my people will know my voice. When I call you, you'll know my voice. And it's a spiritual thing. He says, when I call you, you'll know my voice. You'll wake up and start to one day say, you know what, Jesus, I want to give my life to you. You don't know why you gave your life. You don't know what changed your mind from one day to the next. It's just that when he calls, we respond. And this is the way authority works. This is the way that authority works. I, I don't care what mess you're in. I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care what your life has been like. When the right authority that you have perceived correctly to be in your space, when they stand before you and say you can be great, you're going to be amazing, you're coming out of this thing, there's something inside of you that activates itself. And it says that I can become something. I can walk in that. I can be made whole. I can be delivered. I can be set free. It's something that activates inside of each of us. And this is critical when it comes to understanding your destiny. You must get around somebody that can do more than motivate. They need to be able to activate. Did you hear what I just said? They have to do more than motivate you. They must be able to wake something up in you, push a button inside of you, challenge something that hasn't been challenged before, make you believe that you can do something that you had never thought you could believe about doing. Watch what happens now. This is why, stay with me now, this is why Peter tells Jesus, watch what Peter says to Jesus. Jesus says to Peter, he says, look, Pete, uh, uh, he said, it's me, I am. And Peter says back to Jesus, if it is you, bid me to come out on the water. What does that word bid mean? Make me. Command me. <laughs> Command me to come out on the water. Watch this. He's, Jesus said, well, well, put on your courage. Be of good cheer and of good courage. Why? Because I'm about to, I'm about to pull you into something you had never been pulled into before. He said, command me. Watch what Peter said. Peter said, because there are some things that I'm not going to do by myself. There are some things I'm not going to do on my own. There are some things that I'm not, I don't care how much you motivate me. I'm not going to, there are some things that I, I know I've got the competency to do it, but I don't have the winning habits to perform it. Jesus, help me. I, I want you to understand is that just because somebody doesn't do it doesn't mean they're not activated to do it. Doesn't mean that they're not excited about doing it. If you've got losing habits, uh, a person with losing habits can't win if they try because they'll find a way to lose y'all missed that 
I'm going to say it again. A person that has losing habits can't win if they try because they will find a way to lose. Why? Because every time they get in position to win, they'll go back to the habits that cause them to lose all the time. There are some people that will never have the life that they feel like they want. They'll never have the relationships they believe they should have. They'll never have the friendships that they have longed for in their spirit. And it's not because their longing is bad or their wishing is bad or their hoping is bad. It's because their habits are bad. And an authority figure, somebody shout an authority, wrong person, shout authority. What an authority figure can do is an authority can come activate something inside of you that was once dormant. And then when, a, when, a, when an authority activates, they have to have the courage to command. Peter said, look, I realize that I want to do something bigger than what I can do. So if it's you, you got to activate something in me and then demand and hold me to the standard of the thing that you just activated in me. He said, will you make me come out on the water? You don't have an authority figure over your life if they cannot demand some things out of your life and you respond. I'm going to preach that till y'all get that. A coach ought to be able to say, run harder, run faster. A mentor ought to be able to say, you're smarter than that, do better. A teacher ought to be able to get in your stuff and say, you got more in you. You got to give more. A pastor ought to be able to say, you can do this. And, and, and when we perceive correctly and we can be activated correctly, when the command comes forward, it should force us to do something we've never done before. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody shall activate correctly. You got to be careful who you give that power switch to. Because some people will activate you and they'll activate all your money out your life. And then leave you and go find another woman. Some people will activate you. They will activate you and they'll rob you of all your energy. And then leave you and go find somebody, find a younger, better model. Some people will activate. Y'all not talking back to me in here. You've got to be careful who you choose to give this authority to. Because your life can be radically shifted. People fill up coliseums, spend thousands of dollars to fill up coliseums, hoping that somebody on stage will activate them when they only have the power to really motivate them. Jesus, help me in this place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why when I go, when I go and do motivational speaking, I don't believe in just motivating. I believe in activating. I tell people at the end, you got to do something now. You got to do something now. And everybody that I talk to, you got to go get the book. You got to go take the class. You have to go do this. I challenge them to activate. Don't just be motivated by this because your life doesn't move forward by motivation. It moves forward by activation. Somebody shout activate. Say that loud. Shout activate. And you will not activate correct what you do not see correct. Boy, I'm preaching. I'm helping y'all. That's why, that's, why, that's why I do these because I want us to make sure that when you go to, your, when you go to your, your company and you see the highest earner, you walk over to the highest earner and you tell the highest earner, I need you to be my mentor. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. And what you can't do is you can't get into a tissy fit and an argument and, and, and you cannot throw your accolades down at the foot of somebody you want to be like. You can't do it. You can't come in and say, well, this is what I do, and this is my degree, and here's this, 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 this. then you don't need me then. You don't want to activate, you don't want me to activate you. You're trying to activate me. You hear what I'm saying? But you, you hear what I'm saying? But you can't activate a billionaire when you're a thousandaire. Don't, it don't work. Amen. It doesn't work like that. So humility, somebody shout humility again. Authority, somebody shout authority again. Submission, somebody shout submission again. So I come in with humility and I go to my authority and by, 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 by virtue of understanding, I say I'm willing to submit to the process. <laughs> and the first thing is I'm willing to make this a part of my habit. When I see you, I will honor you. Every time I see you, every time I hear your name, every time I understand, I will not... I'll spend my energy making sure that my honor code is high instead of comparing what I want to do with what you have done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I will be activated the right way. 
I won't take shortcuts. I'll let you speak into my life. I'll let you pull something out of my life. I'll let you motivate me and activate me. I'll, I, will, I will then do the final thing. Now, here's the third thing. First is to see correctly. Second, to be activated correctly. The third thing is to be challenged correctly. To be challenged correctly. There's no use of being activated if you won't step off the boat. If they do not have the authority to command you off the boat. He didn't say, I'm coming down, I'm getting ready to. He said, Jesus, I need you to make me do this thing. He said, Jesus, I need you to get in my face and say, boy, you can preach, and you're going to preach, and you're going to be on the leadership team, and you're going to rock this thing out, and I'm going to be there even if you sink. That's what he said. He said, I need to not just be able to say, hey, you can do this thing, and God's got your back. He said, it's like, nope, 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 nope. Last Sunday of the month, you got it. You got to step out on this water, and we're going to figure this thing out together because I got to be able to challenge you. If you perceive that I've got something to give, then what has to happen now is you got to let me not only give it, but you got to let me get to the deep because the Bible says that the deep draws out from the deep and I've got to get into that deep place and I got to pull that destiny that you say you want out of you and it ain't on that boat, it's on this water. Is that everybody's doing life on the boat. The reason why y'all came to the city is to do life on the water, not life in the boat. You know how to do life in the boat. It's the most comfortable place in your life and you cannot be a a person that challenges me and lets me stay in a comfortable place are you hearing what I'm saying I had somebody tell me once they, they was like you push us so hard and you push on us so hard and you challenge us so hard and I said I don't know if I challenge you so hard or you just not used to being challenged because we we are in this space now where you can't be wrong and nobody loses and everybody's right and whatever you make of your life is a good life and the Bible doesn't teach that the Bible teaches there's a right life there's a wrong life there's a success level and there's a success there's a failure level and somebody's got to be able to look at your competencies and your competencies or sis you ain't doing it at the level you can do it but and they've got to be able to say so rise up when I see you have your hair comb when I see you have your clothes iron when I see you have your assignment when I see you be the woman you said you'd be and you've got to be humble enough to say I perceive that this is the person God put in my life that I am allowing them to activate me to move and now I will take the first step because I will never walk on water in a comfortable place on my boat I won't do it and this is this is this is regardless of age and this is regardless of experience and this is regardless of all of these it's regardless of all of these things that we say well you don't get to say that because you're younger and you don't get to tell me that because you're a man you don't get to tell me this because you're a woman it's not about any of these things it's about the calling and authority that God has placed on somebody's life and if you come into their sphere you need to be humble and let them pull something out of you and make you God or, or, or God's man or God's woman did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? So I sow into the life of my bishop, and I sow into the life of my leaders, and I sow into the life of my local bishop, my, my old pastor. I still sow into his life every week, and I sow into the life of people that bless me, and I sow into the life of people I want to be like. I sow into people's lives that I try to, to go, and sometimes sowing is not money. Sometimes sowing is, hey, I'm going to be there. Let me, sow, let, me, let me armor bear for you this week. Because I'm going to be there while you're there. I'll serve. I'll help you out. Because I'm sowing into a place where I can, where they can activate me and they can pull me out and pull me up. Because there's no use of them pulling you out if they're not going to pull you up. Amen. They're going to pull you out and I got to do something better than what, if I'm going to come out there, it's got to be better than what I'm about to leave in this boat. And Jesus said, just come to me and you'll see that what I'm going to allow you to do is something, watch this, that you always could have done but would have never done if I wouldn't have called you out of that boat. <laughs> and he walks on the water. He starts the business. Or he starts the second business. Or he chooses to love again. Or he chooses to forgive. 
or he chooses to be a better person or he chooses to honor his internal value system or she chooses or she chooses whatever it is that they end up choosing they find themselves in a place where you walk in in places that you did not see yourself or maybe you did see yourself but you just never did it and your authority is able to challenge you because you follow the process this is the bible process God, David was able to look at Saul. Saul was able to recognize that he was a king. Now, Saul didn't want to pull him out. Saul didn't want to activate David as king, so God had to activate David as king with Goliath. But when Saul did, but Saul didn't realize that when he told David he could go fight, he was actually activating David. He told David, go ahead and fight, because he didn't believe David was going to win. David comes back, and God has got him activated, and then he challenges him properly so that he could understand that, 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 that what you have in your hand is is greater than all the armies that are standing by watching you fight and all of a sudden David becomes who David always saw himself to be in a due season because because of this process Joseph the same way Joseph had to Joseph had to every place that Joseph went Joseph learned from every Joseph learned from the people that threw him in prisons Joseph wouldn't dishonor the people that threw him in prisons. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Daniel wouldn't dishonor the king that threw him in the lion's den. Came out the lion's den and went back to serving him. The three Hebrew boys, the, the man threw them in a fiery furnace. He, they, he cried when he did it, but he did it anyway. Leaned over, cried out, asked him, are y'all still alive down there? They said, hell, oh king, all is good. <laughs> Are you? Do you hear what I'm saying? Somebody shout authority. authority. Somebody shout authority. authority. Somebody shout authority. authority. Authority and honor is the key to God elevating you to the next place. And these are the habits that humanity has stopped performing. Mm -hmm. These are the habits that humanity has stopped performing. And we've stopped moving forward in this nation because we've stopped honoring and we stopped understanding the power of authority and we stopped being operating in submission and we stopped all the patterns that make us ride the wave of the spirit into our next dimension so the writer says not by power or by might but by the spirit all I got to do is find a way to rave and the spirit to take me where my degree can't. I'm going to help you in it. And, my, my, and, the, and the way of the spirit will take me in a place where my connections couldn't hook me up. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. If that blessed you, give God a hand praise tonight. Amen. One of the things in the Bible that God detests is he detests what he calls rebellion. Rebellion is a funny thing because rebellion is not always adversarial in the natural. But Jesus looks at it as being an all-out assault in the spiritual. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And this idea that I can dishonor authority, that I don't have to, follow authorities that I don't have to submit myself and get my temper under control and get my emotions under control and get my anger under control and find a better way to fight my frustrations this idea that I don't have to do that as if God didn't say in scripture that all authority is set by me God say all authority whether you like the, the cop or not I put them there whether you like the pastor or not, don't go to the church if you don't, if you can't respect. He said, I put him there. He said, I put him there. And if you're going to be under the, the sphere of their authority, he said, there's a, there's a spiritual way of doing this thing that can bring you into places of victory even when the enemy's trying to hurt you. I, I challenge you. Read Romans 13. He, tells, he said, listen, he said, and when you resist authority, he said, you bring judgment to yourself. You, you sabotage your own destiny. This is just Bible. 
Just Bible. We sabotage our own destiny. We wonder, why can't I get off first base with my business? Why can't I get, you know, I'm the best this and I'm better than that, but nobody will pay attention to me. Nobody give me a chance, right? I say start searching your closet for rebellion. Start pulling out. Who am I dishonoring? Where is my rebellion? Where is this happening? How come I'm not? Uh, I'm preaching better than y'all shot day, man. Because this is counter culture. It's counter conversation. It's counter what chic. And we some kind of way got this mindset that, hey, man, if we just give everybody everything, nobody's going to have to pay the bill for it. And our children are paying the bill for it. Yes, 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 yes. And their children will pay the bill for it. <laughs> so, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for those that are watching online. I thank you for those that are in this room. And, Father, above all things, the Savior said that I do not speak anything that my Father has not told me to say because he was a man under authority. <laughs> Jesus looked at a centurion who said, Jesus, you don't even have to go to my house. All you got to do is send the word. Jesus said, I have not seen such a faith in all of this land because he saw a man who understood authority. And we all have somebody to be subject to. We all do. So don't let the highest person in the room think that he's the biggest person on the planet. The highest person in the room is not the biggest person on the planet. The highest person in the room got somebody that's in a bigger room that we have to respect. Are you following me? So, Father, we want, to do it our, we want to do it your way. And, Father, we want to be challenged by the word. And, Father, I pray that you would give us the eyes to see. I pray that you would give us the ears to hear. I pray that you would give us the hands to move and the feet to shuffle so that your grace will be done in our lives. Father, we're tired of running backwards. All of our motions look forward, but all of our life is moving backwards. God, we're exhausted. We're moving backwards. Teach us the basic biblical principles that move our lives forward. And no, at no space can we get past honoring you and honoring one another. At no place can we make bad habits produce good results. So, Father, we give ourselves to you. And, God, we give ourselves to you in very practical ways. We give ourselves to you in our, in our health habits. Help us break bad habits. We give ourselves to you in our perspective of ourselves. Help us break negative cycles of thinking about ourselves. Some of us have a habit of hating ourselves. As soon as we do something good, we find a way of how we made it bad. God, help us break those cycles. Help us break those cycles that are angry at the world for the world's sake. Everything is bad. Everybody's up to no good. Everybody's got something that they're hiding. Father, we come against all that suspicious nonsense in Jesus' name. Father, we got to build habits that let this mind be in us that is also in Christ Jesus. That we have a transformed mind, like you said in Romans chapter 12. Renewed mind, rather, in Romans chapter 12. And God, I pray that as I have preached and that I have spoken, that the best life, the kingdom life, the God life, would rise up out of each person in this room and never again never again will they walk into a room not seek out the authority and find a way to be humbled in it for your promise to us is that if we humble ourselves under your mighty hand in due time you'll exalt us habit callings in Jesus name amen amen come on give God a hand praise give God a hand praise listen did that bless anybody tonight? Did that bless anybody tonight? I need you guys to do me a favor. Is that Pastor Bill puts together these awesome podcasts that uh, we can go to and you can share them with your friends and you can, uh, you can tell your friends to buy the podcast. I want you guys to make sure that your friends get this podcast. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a dime. All you got to do is have like a subscription to one of the, the, the platforms that the podcast is. And almost everybody in here has iTunes or Spotify or you know the other places where it is I can't remember almost everybody in here has one of those do that send it to your friends put it on your Instagram your Facebook your social media tell people to go and check it out if it blessed your life these three principles could be useful to somebody because we, I, I need you to help me spread the word about how good God's word is at the City of Hope amen amen give God a hand praise 
Give God a hand. Praise. Listen, get the best offering that you can in your hand. Get the best offering that you can in your hand. You can just stay there, sir. You can stay there. Get the best offering that you can in your hand. And we're going to pray over our giving. And, and uh, I'm just going to ask you guys to come down to the front and bring it. We're not going to. Uh, make